Welcome to this overview of outreach and engagement in the Comprehensive Class Member Transition Program provided by the UIC College of Nursing. The aim of this training is to enable participants to better understand the process of outreach and engagement in the Comprehensive Program, develop skills to build relationships with members and others, and overcome barriers to outreach. Outreach, Policy P1.01. Outreach is the process by which comprehensive program staff educate eligible class members in nursing homes or SMURFs about their options for transition to the community. Engagement is an ongoing process that helps members actively participate in the transition process. While outreach refers to a particular part of the pre-transition process, engagement is an ongoing effort that occurs throughout the member's time with the comprehensive program. There are special circumstances that may impact outreach efforts at some facilities. These circumstances can be found in policy P1.03, Facility Outreach Efforts. The outreach worker's role, in its simplest terms, is to identify class members who meet basic program eligibility requirements, that is, Medicaid eligible adults living in nursing facilities in Cook County or Smurfs in Illinois. They then explain the program to the class member and ask the person if they are interested in transitioning to the community. Their role is to ensure that class members are fully informed of their rights under the consent decree. Where it is appropriate, the outreach worker also helps build the member's motivation to transition into the community. For newly admitted class members, the initial outreach attempt must be made between 60 and 70 days after that class member is admitted to a nursing facility or SMURF. Follow-up encounters must occur annually thereafter unless the class member has agreed to be referred for assessment. This includes outreach to class members who previously declined engagement at any point in the comprehensive program process. Ongoing outreach is not required for class members who have been assessed and are proceeding towards transition or those found to meet Colbert exclusionary criteria. Class members must be provided information about their rights and opportunities for community-based living and services available through the Colbert and Williams consent decrees. If a class member requests outreach, the assigned prime agency must attempt engagement within 14 days. The class member should then have an assessment initiated within 14 days of being referred from outreach. Outreach workers are tasked with answering questions about the comprehensive program from class members, their families and guardians, and facility staff. The goal is to ensure that members have a full understanding of the program and the transition process, and to help the members' collateral supports and facility staff remain open to the idea of the member transitioning from the facility. Outreach workers are not expected to know everything about the program but they should have ready access to resources and supports who can help them answer questions. There are three written documents provided by the Illinois Department of Human Services that can support outreach workers in their efforts to educate members, families, and facility staff. Copies of these documents should be given to class members to review and ask questions about. The first is the consent decree fact sheet this includes details about both the Williams and Colbert consent decrees, as well as the resources available to class members through the program. The Frequently Asked Questions document is briefer and contains answers to some of the most common questions members and their families have about the comprehensive program. In addition, the list of community services summarizes all the services that class members can potentially be linked to. Communication with class members and their families should be done in the member's primary and preferred language. When this is not possible, prime staff should access interpreter services. While family, friends, or facility staff can be helpful as informal interpreters or provide information about the class member's preferred language, they should not be relied on as a translator. Agencies should have protocols in place to include professional interpreters or telephonic interpretive services in the outreach process, 
as well as every stage of the care management and transition process. Written materials should also be translated into other languages, but these translations should be coordinated with IDHS in advance. There are Spanish and Polish versions of key program documents already available in the web app library. In addition to language barriers, many class members have difficulty with speech production or with understanding spoken language. The UIC Assistive Technology Unit has developed communication books that are specific to working with class members in the consent decrees. These can be incredibly useful in facilitating communication with members who may have difficulty making themselves understood. Contact UIC ATU to obtain a copy of this book. There are multiple strategies that outreach staff can employ in their effort to engage members in the transition process. These include individual meetings with class members. These individual meetings are often most effective in private spaces, such as a member's room or an office space, but can take place anywhere the member chooses. Outreach staff can also have small group meetings with a handful of class members or deliver presentations to larger groups or facility residents. These group meetings or presentations should take place at least once per quarter at each facility. Outreach staff should also meet with facility staff to explain the program. This includes facility administrators and leadership, such as the director of nursing or social service director, but can also include nursing staff, CNAs, and psychosocial rehabilitation staff. It can be helpful to offer to speak about the program during a regularly scheduled staff meeting, for instance. Peer mentors, if they are available to your agency, can also be an excellent way to give class members a relatable perspective on the program. These are individuals who have transitioned out of a facility successfully and are now living in the community who are able to educate members on their own experience and answer questions from that perspective. Finally, written materials like the fact sheet, frequently asked questions, and the list of community services should be offered to members who do not want to talk, along with an explanation of when the outreach worker will return to the facility. Documentation regarding outreach efforts should reflect the final outcome of the outreach activities for that month, although multiple attempts may be documented within the CCMTP web app. If the class member expresses interest in continuing after being provided with the information described previously, review and complete the informed consent. If the class member wishes to continue, then refer the class member for assessment. The outreach worker must document the member's outcome. This includes information about why outreach was not completed or if outreach was completed, but the member is not proceeding. If the outreach attempt included intervention to address language or accessibility, this must be documented. If a member agrees to assessment, they should be given a copy of the Outreach Referral for Assessment document, which provides additional information on the assessment process and gives the member an idea of what the next steps will be in the transition process. A copy of this document should be signed by the member and staff. If the member does not want to speak with the outreach worker or chooses not to proceed to an assessment, they should be given a copy of the Refuse Engagement or Decline Evaluation document. A copy of this document should be signed by the member and by staff and kept on file. If the member is not proceeding due to exclusionary review or risk of harm, the outreach not proceeding notice must be completed and provided to the member. A copy of this document should be signed by the member and by staff and kept on file. In the comprehensive program, outreach staff are also responsible for obtaining the initial informed consent from the class member. Informed consent is a crucial part of ensuring the class member understands the program. Because of the importance of this document, the process is addressed in a separate training, T1.1. The outreach worker must collect the class member's signature and also provide them with a copy of the document to keep. A copy of the signed informed consent must be uploaded to the web app. As mentioned before, 
Building relationships is one of the primary tasks of the outreach and engagement process. Having prime agencies assigned to specific facilities fosters trust and positive relationships with the class members and staff that work there, thereby increasing the likelihood that individuals will positively respond to and engage in the outreach process. Coordinating a regular schedule for facility visits also helps minimize the impact of the outreach process on the facility's day-to-day -day activities. Arriving on a specific schedule enables the facility to make staff and residents available and facilitates increased cooperation between the facility and their assigned agency. In order to build relationships, outreach workers should introduce the program to the administration and leadership of the facility, as well as to the direct service staff who are interacting with residents regularly. Explain what you need to conduct outreach, such as a census of Medicaid eligible residents and the ability to meet with them in private spaces as much as possible. Approaching the process with the attitude that outreach staff would like to work collaboratively with facility staff can make the process move more smoothly. Ask how the agency can make the process easier for the facility. Ensure that facility staff have access to the same fact sheets and educational materials you are providing to residents and family. This will help staff provide clarifying information to class members when appropriate. Finally, building relationships with class members, families, and guardians will help them to support members in the transition process and encourage them to provide insight and information about class members. There are several important considerations when exploring the outreach and engagement process. Since outreach staff are often a class member's first introduction to the comprehensive program, the initial impression they leave is vital. Outreach staff should consider all aspects of how they present themselves when representing the comprehensive program and their agency in the community. This includes both verbal and nonverbal communication. Outreach staff should be perceived as professional in both appearance and demeanor, whether they are interacting with facility staff class members, or family and other supports. How individuals experience the outreach and engagement process may affect how they respond to anyone else associated with the comprehensive program, for better or worse. If they have a negative experience at outreach, they may be less likely to respond well to other program staff, but a positive outreach experience can smooth the process for everyone. After outreach, Class members and facility staff will interact with assessment staff, care managers, transition coordinators, and other teams involved in their transition. The outreach worker has a responsibility to ensure that their interactions ease the way for the other participants in the transition process. Not all members are eager to speak with an outreach worker. However, it is important to look at this reluctance from the member's perspective the outreach worker is a stranger who is entering their home, the nursing facility or SMURF, unexpectedly and uninvited. The member may have had other plans for the time the worker arrived, or may simply want to know in advance when they will have a visitor. The member may also not feel well. Many members are struggling with multiple chronic physical and mental health issues. The member may not understand the purpose of the outreach worker's visit or who they are, they may be mistrustful of strangers in general, or may have cognitive impairments that impact their ability to understand the situation. In addition, residents in nursing homes often feel they do not have much control over their day-to-day -day lives. Their meals are prepared for them, they take their medications at assigned times, and they do not get to choose which staff they work with. Many members try to combat this by taking control of the parts of their lives that they do have control over, and this includes which outside visitors they interact with. This reluctance can be overcome, however, especially when relationships are effectively built. If the outreach worker is able to say, I'll be back in the facility next Tuesday at two, for instance, the member may be more prepared to meet with them upon their next visit. The outreach worker can also leave written materials for the resident to review at their own pace or with help from family or other supports. Having peer mentors available to meet with potential program participants is also helpful. 
These peers can answer questions based on their own experience and can relate to the process from the member's perspective in a way that non-peer staff cannot. Finally, group outreach meetings can feel lower pressure to some class members, especially those who are reluctant to meet with an outreach worker one-to-one. -one. A key tool for overcoming reluctance in class members is a strong sense of flexibility and adaptability. Current versions of all comprehensive program policies and forms, as well as educational resources, can be found on the Colbert and Williams training website managed by the UIC College of Nursing. Any questions can be directed to the Colbert Williams Help Desk email listed on that website. Thank you for your attention and efforts to ensure safe and successful member transitions.